Gotta have my bucks. College is where I learned what hard work is. And it's also where I learned the difference between liking something and devoting yourself to something. I once ate 2,000 calories with $12. Got a pizza from 800 degrees, it's right in the village, and then a Jimmy John's gargantuan, and I just ate them back to back. It was a feat of fat men frugality. But I'm actually still in Westwood training uh, at UCLA uh, with my coach, John Frazier. So I'm down there probably two to three days a week, depending on my schedule. And it's weird being back because this place is just a collection of formative memories. Um, you know, everywhere you go is just, you're running into past versions of yourself growing and changing based on, you know, where you go on campus. Um, I mean, the shopping ring is probably the best example. It's a place that I've probably spent more waking hours in than any other place in the last five years. Damn. One of my favorite places in the entire world. It's got a spectacular view. I just, I just love it. You gotta check it out. I think it's pretty special. But either way, I just finished my lift. Today was, again, lower body. Started off with a Bulgarian squat. Not pushing the depth too much because that would cause pain in my adductor area. Then we went into a good morning. Um, everything pretty lightweight, just working reps, focusing on firing that posterior chain. Then on to some single leg dumbbell deadlifts, this time holding the dumbbell in the opposite arm of the leg that's standing, uh, just focusing more stability and changing it up a little bit. And then some physio ball work, um, single leg bridges which really just forces everything to be firing, keeps the glutes and the hips all in line, and then some hamstring curls, double leg hamstring curls for that glute to ham ratio that we're all looking for. Unofficial partner of Muscle Milk, the milk with no lactose and lots of muscle. This is Rubio's Ancho Grilled Shrimp Burrito. It's the best thing on their menu. There's some shrimp in there. And it's got about a thousand calories in it, so it's a pretty good uh, post-workout meal. Scrolling down Mac Throw video right now, there's a lot of heated conversation going on about the role of a non-reverse throw for a rotational shot putter. I, from personal experience, know that uh, non-reverse training uh, can help a great deal. Usually when I'm, I'm feeling a poor connection at the front, uh, it has to do with timing. Either I'm blocking, which in the rotational shot is usually a quick pop off the left foot, I'm blocking either too early or too quickly. So I think working on a non-reverse with that left foot forced down uh, throughout the entire release. Make sure that you're using the ground uh, all the way until the ball's out of your hand. 
I think insisting on the right foot to remain on the ground without moving uh, while completing a non-reverse practice throw is, is a little bit much to me if the right foot completes its rotation on the ground and in, in extension, then it's allowed to move forward. It's done its job more or less. The important aspect of the non reverse for me is that left foot remaining down, which also will gauge your balance. Uh, so if you know you're falling off to the left or the right, that means you're not fully balanced and finishing up and on top of that left foot at the front, whether you're rotational or whether you're more linear, uh, is I think really the key to having a very strong finish in the rotational shot. Hey, so I left school and I'm actually you now on my way back home in traffic. I'm not moving anywhere very quickly. Tortoise and the hare kind of thing. Quick update on the injury. I was able to talk to a couple of throwers who've had similar issues. Guys who've had surgery for sports hernia. Both did not do an adductor release, even though they were having similar adductor pain. Both advised against it. Still in the process of figuring out exactly what's right. Make a lane switch. One of the guys I spoke to, uh, an American shot put and discus thrower, Russ Winger, talked about uh, how the most important aspect of, of any of this recovery or uh, avoiding surgery is going to be finding a really good physiotherapist and, and really committing for a number of solid weeks to to some hardcore physiotherapy, strengthening, mobility, and that kind of thing. He recommended taking the next three to four weeks, engaging the, the pain level and see if the, there's any change to it over that time period. So I'm confident that I've got about that much time uh, before I need to make any sort of final decision regarding yes or no on a surgery. Bottom line is, I'm actually getting pretty optimistic about avoiding surgery. It's still on the table, of course, but I want to treat that as a worst case scenario, last resort. So that being said, I'm going to start documenting more of my rehab and recovery activities. Get psyched about it! Tell me tumble there